Our next guest remains confident in Iger's ability to create a profitable platform. Luke Capital analyst Alan Gould joins us. He maintains a buy, lowers his price target, though, to 120, uh, to 125. It had been 130. Alan, good to have you here. Good morning. Uh, market right now is saying they don't like this quarter. What did you like about it? I think we learned three things in the quarter. Number one, the streaming losses were less than expected. And it does look like Iger has got the company on a path to eventual profitability or the streaming to eventual profitability. The other two things we learned were streaming losses, sub losses were more than expected. And it now does seem like Disney's going to end up buying the one third from Comcast, uh, your parent company of Hulu. Yeah, paying perhaps as much as nine billion dollars based on well, the ownership a, stake and the put and where, where it be valued. I'd say a minimum of nine point three billion dollars. Thank you. Uh, we'll take the money. But, you know, can can mm -hmm. Disney actually in its balance sheet? We don't talk about it as much, perhaps, but, you know, it's a fairly levered company at this point, given the debt it took on during the pandemic. Sure. And an additional nine billion. Does that hobble it at all if, in fact, it does go according to the original plan of them buying what they don't own of Hulu? It's 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 not going to really destroy them. Disney was levered about should be levered about two and a half times EBITDA. And with the increase in cash flow next year, uh, even taking on the nine billion and give a call 10 billion of free cash flow leverage is 2.1 times next year. So it's certainly not a problem for Disney. Cash flow numbers, though, are still well below what they once were in 2019. Of course they are. You yeah. know, are they ever going to get back to the numbers they once saw? That goes back to the question, will the linear business ever, will, will streaming well, make up the losses of the linear business? Exactly. It's going to take a while. I mean, I think the best way to look at it, Netflix is sort of the premier in streaming. They're approaching a 20 percent margin. Yeah, Disney's not going to have the scale of Netflix. Disney may be getting out of some, some of the international markets. But Disney will also have a more, cu more curated service and probably has better brands and franchises. Yeah. So, but, but a lot never, lower margins. You're never going to get to the old 40% margin that the cable network business used what to have. A great business. But speaking of that business, I mean, the declines continue and, in fact, seem to be speeding up in terms of cord cutting. Does that put more pressure not just on Disney but on all of these companies that are relying on direct-to-consumer to make up for it? Absolutely. The ecosystem is shrinking quicker than we would have thought. All the major studios had advertising down, I think, 10 to 15 percent this quarter. Uh, sub declines are about 6 percent and accelerating. Um, and it did seem like Disney's talking about the eventual pivot of ESPN from a linear cable service to a streaming service coming sooner than we would have guessed a year ago. I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight, but it's going to be sooner than we would have thought. As you bundle those, does um, the consumer have less app fatigue and is churn, does that, does that normalize over the long term, you think? I, I mean, there is more churn now. As, uh, I do think there's going to have to be more consolidation. What we're seeing right now is cost cutting. You know, Disney's laying off 7,000 of probably 80,000 or so stu uh, entertainment employees. Paramount just announced another big cut. So first we're going to have cost cutting, then we'll have some eventual consolidation.